guests uh, here on realagriculture.com. We have Paul Hetherington, president of uh, the Baking Association of Canada, and Paul, your organization has uh, a position out there that you're in favor of choice when it comes to biotech wheat. Absolutely. Uh, you still see some uh, some major questions that need to be answered, though, if, if things ever move in that direction. Right. I mean, one of the asks we've been making of the supply chain throughout this whole discussion on biotech wheat is what understanding is there with regards to consumer acceptance and demand? What, are, what level of, um, are we going to be finding a situation where um, the consumers, and as a result of their interest, that we're going to need 50% of the existing crop to be conventional? 25%? 75%? We don't know. And obviously, if you're looking at trying to move you know, a couple million tons of wheat, you need to have the infrastructure in place in order to be able to do that, an understanding of what the equipment requirements are, and the producers are going to have to be, have an understanding of what type of wheat they're going to have to grow. So that has been a, a major focus of our organization, and, you know, con we're, it's fair to say we're frustrated, because, you know, we're, we're been involved with, engaged in this process for a couple of years now, and we still don't have that understanding. Um, so, you know, that is one of the challenges I threw out here today. So does the responsibility lie with proponents of, of biotech wheat in finding out that market acceptance rate and doing some I guess, market analysis or that kind of research? Well, we, ideally, yes. You know, if you're bringing something into the market, uh, an initiative in, that's going to um, potentially cause, and I don't want to overstate and say that it is, but potentially can cause some market disruption, then, you know, in order to um, provide confidence through the supply chain, one would put the onus on those who are bringing this um, uh, ingredient or this, uh, in this case, uh, uh, potential biotech wheat into the market to say, listen, we've done the research. We can help to address the concerns. And by the way, you, you can expect potentially these type, this type of pushback with customers or your consumers, and here's some tools to help you address those type of concerns. One of the things we do know is you know, the farm, uh, farm producer groups are in a much better place with regards to addressing these type of issues with consumers than we are as industry. The you know, consumers at large give a, have a strong sense of credibility or give that credibility to farmers. So the farm groups are certainly more uh, better produce, uh, positioned to be able to address those issues. At the same time, as part of your talk here on the week, course meeting, you talk about how uh, the onset of I have, I couldn't even fathom to make a prog prognosis on when we're going to talk to see about a commercialization of a biotech wheat. I mean, that rests with those companies who are potentially bringing it to market. I think, though, that social media has provided a very effective tool for those who are not, who are on the other side of this issue, and so that proponents of it really need to understand what those issues are, what those areas of concerns are with consumers, if they exist, and be able to construct the appropriate messages to be able to uh, allow them to respond and put that in place and be very proactive about it, be very transparent, because a lot of these issues that you know, we've been encountering, uh, I think, come down to transparency and being proactive in inform your information share. Thanks for your time. You're welcome.